Hi everyone, this is Sam Gabriel. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I want to talk about the Vault Agent and some of its capabilities and why to use the agent and what we can do with it. So uh, let's get started right away. Now, the, uh, the Vault Agent, um, if you're familiar with it, it's a sort of a helper or helper function or set of helper functions that uh, come along uh, Vault and can sit beside the application and connect to Vault, authenticate into Vault, uh, and, you know, renew tokens on behalf of Vault, and uh, and basically take away the functionality that you would have to write in your own code in your own application to deal with uh, things like I mentioned, authentication, renewal, and so on. So uh, this brief diagram that you see on the screen here, I'll walk you through it. Basically, you have the Vault server, and it has its different authentication methods. Uh, the Vault agent will sit in the VM uh, or as a sidecar in Kubernetes. Uh, but for this demo, we're just going to talk about uh, in a VM scenario. So the Vault agent will sit as a process uh, inside the same VM where your application lives. And uh, it's going to do a number of things. It's going to authenticate acquired token via a configured auth method. Maybe app role as an example or maybe an AWS auth method. Uh, in our example, our demo, we'll, we'll talk about Apro. And uh, once it's authenticated using Apro into Vault, it's going to write the token that it used, that Apro uh, method that was used. It's going to write its token into a sync file. And then the application can retrieve that token uh, from that sync file and use it to invoke Vault API calls to the Vault server to do a number of things with Vault. So that's the basic function of uh, the Vault Agent. So you may have heard of this, and um, in a number of videos, I've I've used the Vault Agent to uh, retrieve secrets from from Vault and and perhaps store them in a file uh, where the application is, so the application can retrieve those secrets. So that's the first use case. In that case, the application doesn't need to be Vault aware; it can just grab those secrets from that file location and it can run with it. Uh, the other one is that maybe you want to have your application become vault aware. So basically your application just needs to read the token from that sync file and then uh, access vault and do whatever it needs to do with vault, whether retrieve secrets, uh, encrypt, encrypt um, plain text, do all kinds of things that it needs to do. Now what you might not have heard of is the ability to do caching with the vault agent. So uh, I'm gonna walk you through this diagram really quickly Basically, your application wants to talk to Vault. Instead of talking to Vault directly, you can actually talk to Vault through the Vault agent. Uh, so what's, what's the reason for doing that? Um, well, it's, it's mainly to alleviate pressure on, uh, on Vault in a number of cases, right? So if you're trying to retrieve uh, tokens or create tokens or even creating uh, things like dynamic secrets, um, if you're doing that at a very high level, I mean, you're hitting Vault pretty frequently, uh, there can be a toll on, on the Vault server, right? So this is where we can do caching through the Vault agent. And just notice that caching only works with, uh, you know, tokens and any secrets that use leases. So uh, an example of that are dynamic secrets. Basically, they have a time to live, right? So you get a lease for that dynamic secret. The key value store is not a, uh, a lease secret. It's permanent, pretty much. It's static, so there's no lease associated with it. All right, so basically the app uh, or the Vault agent is gonna cache those dynamic secrets uh, or the tokens that you're creating. So the application makes a request, uh, so request a secret or lease or a token to, uh, th uh, to the Vault agent. The Vault agent is going to check its cache if it's available in the cache, of course, it's going to return what the application needs. If it's not, it's going to make a request to the Vault server um, and basically get whatever is requested, returns that secret or token back to the Vault agent. Vault agent will store it to the cache and then uh, respond back to the application with whatever was requested. So in this case, we are actually uh, caching um, the requests. Now, I'm going to put a link in the description to this article here, but there's a very helpful video here that you can 
uh, watch to see caching in uh, in action before caching and like without caching and with caching you can see the performance hit and uh, how caching really helps from a performance point of view all right what i want to do now is i want to demonstrate all of this uh, to you and before we do that this github repo i'm going to also link it in the description so you can uh, run it yourself for the purposes of this demo i am going to run a I'm i've already created an hcp vault cluster so hcp stands for hashicorp cloud platform you may have heard of uh, hashicorp's um, work into moving their application moving the uh, the, the vault products uh, into SaaS offerings so hashicorp cloud platform for vault this is in beta public beta currently uh, very soon it's going to ga and basically to make things easier and, and faster and also to demo hcp as we go through i created a vault um, cluster in it you don't need to do that for uh, for for this demo you can just run it locally however i do i do not recommend that you run uh, in dev mode for a vault server the reason being is that i found that the vault agent if it doesn't see a vault token it's going to use the root token from the vault server uh, directly so we don't want that behavior we want to run it in a normal uh, vault server environment you can use the uh, file backend if you'd like or um, or raft or or anything else uh, for this demo again i'm using enterprise vault you don't need to do that i'm going to use namespaces as well to show you how that works and um, <clears throat> if you follow the instructions here it's pretty straightforward as to how to set up everything and get the demo running okay so let's get started and uh, the very first thing we want to do is i want to show you um, the startup script that i have here so basically I'm exporting the vault address. Okay, so just the address here from HCP. Uh, the namespace that I'm using, just the default admin uh, namespace. I'm grabbing the vault root token. I'm reading it from a file called vault root token.txt. I'm not gonna show you that, but here's an example. So all you need to do is once you create a cluster in HCP, or if you're doing this locally, uh, just grab the root token or the admin token in terms of HCP, uh, HCP terms, and put it in this file and just change the name from example.txt to just .txt. And if we go back to the readme, uh, apologies if you go back to the start. So we're gonna read the vault token and then what, what are we, we're gonna do inside of vault is going to create an app role in vault that we're gonna use by the vault agent. So create a, an authentication method called April, and that ties into a policy called agent policy. And agent policy is very simple. It allows us to read at the path secret, read an update. And, um, and then over here, we are gonna write that authentication April as a role, and we're gonna do a few things. The secret ID time to live, just give it a number here, two hours. How many uh, how many uses of the token that we wanna use? I'll give it 100. The length of time for that token, uh, the maximum TTL for that token. The secret ID, what are the number of uses for that? 150 in this case. And the policy attached, that's the agent policy that we just showed. Once that's created, uh, I wanna create a dummy KV secret, so I'm putting that into the secret test path. Call it foo, and the secret is actually bar. And then, so the key is foo, the value is bar for the secret. And then use the, or read the role ID and create a wrapped secret ID, and we're gonna store those in a location where the vault agent can read them from. So we're gonna read this uh, role ID, get the, the field uh, for that, and um, store it in this folder called weblog role ID. And then we're going to do the same thing for the secret. In this case, we're using a wrapped uh, secret ID. So the way you do it is you uh, use this command here. And from here, you're going to, or we're going to store that wrapped secret into this uh, file here as well. And 
uh, from here we're going to see that the vault agent configuration itself is pulling from those locations. So if I walk you through the vault agent configuration real quick, you see the address. This is the actual vault address uh, in HCP. And the method of authentication is APRL. Uh, and here's the config that we need for APRL. So you need the uh, role ID file path. That's what we just wrote, the role ID. Secret ID file path, we also just wrote that. This command here, remove secret ID file after uh, reading, you have the option for the vault agent to delete the, the secret ID file after it reads it. So you can put it as true or you can just leave it as false. And then finally, uh, this path here or this uh, command here is telling vault or telling the vault agent that whatever secret ID stored in this path is actually a wrapped secret ID. Okay, and that's the role associated with it. So basically, Vault is going to unwrap that uh, that secret ID, and once it unwraps it once, it's at that point that wrapped secret ID is useless. You can't use it for anything else. And I'm going to talk about that in case your Vault agent restarts, for example. Um, what do you do in that instance? Okay, and we'll go through another option of. Uh, not wrapping the secret ID and just storing the actual secret ID and the pros and cons of that. Then there is this concept of the sync file. If you recall, the sync file here was um, was the file where the token is going to live. So that that's a very important thing because this is where we're going to grab that token to authenticate into a vault to be able to retrieve secrets. Okay. Uh, the listener, this is where we're listening on port 8007 on local host. This is the vault agent listening on that port. And then cache, use auto auth token, true. Um, I'm going to talk about this in just a bit. But uh, this, yeah, I'll talk about it in a bit. It'll, it'll be a bit clearer when we run the actual demo. Okay. Um, finally, the last couple of files that we're actually going to use to retrieve the secret. The first one is get secret, uh, sh. It's a shell script, a bash script, and what it's doing. Uh, we're exporting the vault agent address, which is the listener address that we saw in the vault agent config. And we're going to read the actual vault token that we retrieved that the vault agent wrote into the sync file. So we're getting that from the vault token. Uh, sync file, which we saw right here, um, which we wrote right here at this location. So in, at the vault token file location. And let's get back to where we were. Um, okay, we're going to retrieve that vault token and uh, just do a few echo commands to show you what uh, what we're doing, uh, and then what we're going to do is look up look up that token, see what what privileges, what capabilities it has, and uh, then we're going to retrieve that secret secret that we wrote in the very beginning. You can see the namespace is admin and the path of the secret. So I'm using the Vault CLI for this. Then I'm going to use a simple curl command to do the exact same thing to retrieve the secret from the same location. Okay. Now, once that's done, I'm going to run a uh, Python app, a very quick Python uh, app to do pretty much the same thing. So as you can see here, we're importing the HVAC library that's used, that's the vault library in Python and uh, uh, specifying the vault URL. Now, this is key for the vault Python library. We're using the actual uh, address of the vault agent and not the actual address of the vault server, right? So I don't know the, in this case, I don't know the vault server um, or I don't care to know. I just want to cache everything. I want to make sure I go through the vault server. I'm sorry, the vault agent. And uh, once again, I'm reading the token from the sync file and um, then making a client request. So make, initializing the, the client, the HVAC client passing the namespace, the token, and the URL. In this case, it's the actual agent URL. 
and uh, looking up again the, the token just as we did before to see its capabilities uh, and then finally reading the the secret at the same location as before and printing the result out okay so one difference between the Python library and uh, and this just doing it in the vault CLI or through curl is that you have the option here to use the vault agent address environment variable or you can also use the vault address environment variable either way you're gonna get the same result whereas when you're using the library the Python library you just need to use the vault uh, address um, or just the URL it's not really uh, thinking whether this is uh, you know the vault address or the vault agent address it's just looking for a URL in this case we're gonna use the URL of the vault agent all right so let's get started and uh, show you the demo uh, let me stop the agent okay so we're gonna run the start script that I just showed you before before um, it's it's airing out here on the app roll because it's already created it's already in use um, as you can see it uploaded the policy it, uh, it wrote the role which these are all already existing so it doesn't matter now what we're gonna do is we're going to run the agent so that command is vault agent and then the flag config and then the config file that we saw earlier so now that's running it's listening on port 8007 as we mentioned before you can see it created the file sync uh, you see the path where the token got dropped into um, and it's just sitting there and, and listening it can it's it will renew the the token when it needs to um, and so on so now let's go ahead and clear this uh, first I'm gonna run the bash script and let's take a look at the output uh, it's very simple you can see the agent address right here the to the token that uh, that's been used that's associated with the app role that was sitting in the sync file uh, taking a look at the that token you can see the role name is agent uh, here's the path it's the app role here's the policies associated with this particular token so it's agent number of uses uh, 98 it was 100 remember when you started or we specified a, a, a max 100 and uh, and then there's the output data right so here's my key um, foo and the value is bar so we retrieved that um, and then this is showing you the curl output command so this command is the output of the uh, vault CLI command and this is the output of the curl command so we're also able to get that uh, no problem all right let's clear that out and let's run the Python command to run my Python file and it's the exact same thing you can see that the token um, that was in the sync file um, you can see the path is app role here and the policies agent and default uh, the data that's retrieved foo bar and just in a more succinct way showing you the the secret that was retrieved which is bar so basically showing that you know through the vault CLI through through just a simple curl or through a library such as the Python library we're able to retrieve these secrets directly or indirectly I should say through the vault agent if I go back to the vault agent you can see the cache is being invoked but in this case because I'm retrieving the key KV KV secret which is a uh, non lease secret it's not really being cached um, it's being forwarded over to the actual to vault the vault server but if you were to run this example with a dynamic secret for example you'll see the difference in in caching okay let's jump real quick into the vault uh, I wanted to show this really quick this is HCP so portal.cloud.hashicorp.com and uh, here we have our console um, you can use console terraform opens into a new uh, browser window but here's vault that's in beta uh, if you want to play around with it it's still in beta till March 31st so go ahead and test it out create your own cluster 
you can see the cluster got created here into which network. So you got to first create a network. Um, it's a bunch of clicks. That's all it is. It's very, very simple. Snapshots, these get created periodically. You can see a snapshot per day. You can rename these snapshots. You can restore from a snapshot. It's very handy. And uh, in the overview page, you can see the private and public URLs for your cluster. You can have this cluster um, allow public connections from outside your selected network, which is definitely not a best practice to do when you're running in production. But just for demo purposes, I'm allowing that so I can hit it from, a, uh, from anywhere on the internet. And, uh, and then finally, you can generate a token here. This is an admin token that you can use to do all kinds of things. And it expires, I think, in a few hours, uh, maybe five or six hours. I can't remember. And then you can access the audit logs. You can seal the cluster and unseal the cluster right from the portal itself. So I encourage you to uh, take it for a spin. Um, finally, here is what it looks like. So this is the actual cluster that's in HCP that's sitting in AWS. And here's the secret that we were looking at before. And as you can see, foobar. So that's what we were, we were uh, retrieving. Now, I want to go back and uh, really quickly show you one more thing. If you recall, going back to the vault agent config, um, we talked about the wrapped secret ID. So if we were to look at the config, remember that um, the, can, the vault agent config is, is pointing to the role ID for this file and the wrapped secret ID in this file. So here's the role ID, it's grabbing it from here. And here is the, well, the wrapped secret ID, right? Now, remember with wrapped tokens or wrapped secret IDs, you can only use them once. So what will happen if I go ahead and stop my agent and try to run it again? Right away, you start to get these errors. Wrap token is not valid or does not exist, okay? So it's trying to unwrap the, uh, the wrap token, but it's already been unwrapped before, so this is not going to work. Now, what do you do? Well, you have two options. The secure option is to run the script again. So if I run the entire start script again, it's going to generate a new role ID and a new wrap secret ID and drop them in the two files that I mentioned earlier. Now, if I run the agent, uh, it's going to work and everything is good, right? So this could be part of a pipeline where you can call a pipeline to issue or recreate those uh, uh, wrapped secret ID. Or uh, this could be tied to, let's say, a script tied to system D that's actually monitoring the uh, vault agent process itself. So whenever the process restarts, it goes out and, and creates these um, wrapped, it creates the wrapped secret ID for you. Now what happens if we say, all right, you know what, let's go back and um, let's comment this out. And instead of using a wrapped secret ID, I am going to use a secret ID directly. Okay, so I, I need to go back into, um, sorry, let me just take this out. Now I just need to go back into that start script I'm going to uncomment this because now I'm telling, now in the script, I'm basically going to vault and saying issue a secret ID for me instead of a wrapped secret ID and drop it in this file. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back, stop the agent, run the startup script again, and then run the agent again. So now the agent is running. What happens if I stop the agent and rerun the agent? It works fine. Why? Because now the this file, which I still call it wrapped secret ID, this is actually the secret ID itself. It's not the wrapped secret ID uh, that we had from before. So now, uh, as you can see, this is probably insecure and um, in addition to that, the secret ID that you're going to create here has to be long lived because you don't want your agent to restart to find that the secret ID had expired, right? So it has to be long lived. 
and it has to be unlimited number of uses for that secret ID as well if you're going to go down that path. Definitely not my recommendation from a security point of view, uh, but just showing you how you can, you can uh, use this option as well. So hopefully this has been helpful to understand the Vault agent a little bit better, the features around that, the uh, caching feature and how you can indirectly retrieve secrets from Vault through the Vault agent and how that all works. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in this video, there are ways to use the Vault agent um, with templating. So if you go here under templates, Vault agent templates, this is where I mentioned that you can use the Vault agent with an application that is not Vault aware to basically retrieve secrets from a path uh, and then drop it based on this template, as you can see here, at a destination file based on a source template that you can create. So maybe it's a username and a password that uh, the application needs. Maybe it's a database username and database password and it needs a certain format. So you can use the template for that format, maybe db underscore username equals the actual username, db underscore password equals the actual password. So you can specify that in the template and then drop that into that destination file where the actual application is uh, grabbing those secrets and, uh, and using them in the application code itself. So at that point, it's not it doesn't rely on Vault. It doesn't need to make API calls to Vault. It simply grabs those secrets and uh, accesses the database, for example. Yeah, so once again, hopefully this has been helpful. Shed some light on the, on the Vault agent, some of the use cases around that. Thank you for watching.